Hi, it's nice to meet you here. I um, think I can probably start the first presentation uh, here uh, in the Black Hat Europe. So, uh, who am I? Um, um, my name is Alex. Uh, what I'm doing is basically researching the SAP and Oracle applications. I found some hundreds of vulnerabilities in uh, those applications and so on. Uh, this is my colleague Matthew. He will um, help me to present you uh, this uh, topic uh, more in details. Um, yeah, what well, we do many things with SAP and Oracle, but uh, this presentation will be uh, kind of a mix of what we usually do with what we uh, don't do usually. So. This topic for me is it's very um, it's it's very new uh, type of research. It's, it's very unusual, and how it was started basically uh, when I was um, just a young penetration tester in about 2006, almost 10 years ago. I was involved in one of the uh, assessments of a large oil and gas company, and they have a they had a uh, retail store with point of sales uh, terminals. Uh, it was a pe petrol station, and they wanted us to analyze security of the software and the hardware in this petrol station. Um, but it was not a simple pen test, like you know, to find the vulnerability and uh, get access to operation system. They asked, they were, they were asking like, what the attackers can really do with this access, and they. The question was because uh, uh, some cyber criminals uh, successfully exploited their system. They put the malware on the software and the hardware, and they were able to steal uh, petrol from the stations uh, using this hardware. So it was a real attack, and we were involved in a forensic investigation, and we tried to analyze the vulnerabilities. That's what it was many years ago, but. Uh, uh, after that, I realized that I want to spend my uh, research not in a, like a not only on the technical stuff, how to find the vulnerability, but also how to uh, show the management uh, the real risk and what can happen. Um, and then, uh, you know, during the last years, we were engaged in the uh, large pen uh, test of the. Uh, oil and gas uh, oil and gas companies. Uh, we did a SAP vulnerability assessment, but uh, the question, their questions were, okay, we you have access to SAP, uh, but now what? What you can do? And I was really thinking, yeah, what I can do with oil and gas company because most of the pen tests are usually against. Uh, banking sector and y you can easily say yeah we can you know have access and steal money and that's easy uh, but what you can do with oil and gas company there was a question and that uh, what I was trying to understand so let's start with the um, uh, oil and gas basics uh, there are three uh, types of processes like uh, big process in oil and gas is upstream midstream and downstream and different companies are uh, there are some companies who can who manage the upstream midstream and downstream there are some companies who will only manage the one part so upstream companies is the companies who take some oil from the ground and you know transfer it to uh, storage that's it uh, it's it's much more complex, but it's just simply uh, the midstream. It's like some companies who uh, you know transfer oil from one place to another place, and um, uh, downstream is basically refining petrochemicals and uh, uh, wholesale retail and so on. So it looks like that. Uh, again, we have uh, upstream. It's mostly about the exploration of oil. Like the find place where we can drill to um, to basically to drill to take the oil and do some uh, basic things like separation of oil and gas and so on. Then we have a midstream as a storage and processing and a downstream. So let's look at the uh, details of um, each of those uh, each of those parts uh, in a 
in upstream, we have um, uh, those processes that are, those are the main process. Of course, we have some more. So extraction is everything that is related to uh, to find some you know, place for drilling and actual drilling. Then we have gathering. Uh, it's like taking oil from the ground to the separators. And in separators, of course, because we take some some subs it's not oil basically, it's uh, oil plus gas plus water plus sand and a lot of things, so we need to somehow separate it. We have separators, uh, and in each of those parts, uh, we there are some small parts, like in separators, there are different types of separators with you know, different types of pressure. There are heaters, uh, uh, burners, and stuff like that. So in each of those uh, big processes, like there are some small critical processes. Uh, so what we have here, uh, again, then, then for gas, we have uh, compression. For oil, we have some kind of temporary storage. And of course, we have metering. This is one of the um, critical parts. Uh, so we need to measure the, the quality of oil somehow. Uh, again, it not very, looks not very good, but uh, it's just a graphical presentation how, uh, how those processes are, are going. So we have uh, extraction from the wells, then the, the oil going to the uh, separators, and then to the storage and so on. Uh, so the next step is the midstream. Uh, in the midstream, we have uh, things like um, uh, terminal management. So the terminals need to somehow transfer the oil. Uh, we need transport uh, oil, transport gas, um, store this in the different facilities, uh, and manage the storage. And it all looks like that. And again, there are you know lots of different uh, places like terminals, terminals for uh, uh, for barges, for trucks, and for other uh, different parts, so many uh, many things, and uh, and the last part is uh, the downstream. Uh, so the, here we have refining, is basically where we need to uh, uh, create the petrol from oil. And we have different petrochemicals. It's a, it's a whole new universe. Like uh, it's so many different types of the hardware and software and potential vulnerabilities. So I think that it can be a conference with talks only about uh, different attacks on different types of oil and gas petrochemicals. So it's really uh, this area is really so big. So I, my talk is just you know like. Uh, just the overview, it's not possible to give you um, uh, uh, detailed information of uh, all the things, but it's like a, some, at least some kind of overview. Uh, and the things what can happen is, is here. So those are the main risks. Because uh, in, um, in oil and gas, so it's uh, mostly about the plant sabotage. It's about the uh, damage for equipment, uh, damage for uh, utilities. Uh, there's things like uh, changing the product quality. Like if you have access to refinery, you can change some parameters, and the oil will be uh, not so good like uh, as you want it to be, uh, and so on. And in the, in the transportation. Uh, there are things like uh, illegal tapping. It's a very big problem in um, uh, in the midstream process because somebody can, uh, uh, you know, f um, make illegal tapping in the oil wells and just you know steal oil. Uh, and there are many uh, examples. If you just Google for uh, illegal uh, pipeline tapping. You will find so many uh, examples of how people are you know, stealing oil. And of course, some compliance violations and so on. So those are the things which can happen if somebody can uh, exploit the system. But uh, uh, how, it's, how it's possible, it's, uh, let's see. So 
Let's look at the some of the most critical processes uh, here. I choose just only three processes uh, uh, to dive more deeper. So the first one is the separation. Uh, separation consists basically of different uh, things like uh, uh, burn and management systems, uh, compression control systems, uh, and other stuff. And there are some, uh, and for each of those processes, there are specific um, uh, software and hardware applications. So when people talk about the um, ICS security, the people mostly talk about the uh, SCADA systems. But if I, when I took, uh, just started researching oil and gas, I understood the SCADA is it's like a one percent of things that uh, really exist in, uh, in oil and gas process. There are so many systems, like ICS systems, which control specific um, PLC devices and specific meters. So there are burner management systems. It's, uh, you know, there, it's, there are so many companies who develop different types of burner management systems, and each of them can have a, a specific vulnerabilities and uh, you know, specific types of the uh, configuration issues and so on. Uh, yeah, and the burden management systems uh, are uh, most, I think, the most interesting because they exist in uh, many processes, uh, in, in tanks, in heaters, in separators, and so on. So there are different um, um, companies who develop it. Mo mostly those are uh, Honeywell, uh, Schneider Electric, uh, Allen Bradley, uh, Emerson. So there are also four vendors uh, who really have uh, software and hardware to, for most of the oil and gas um, uh, systems. So there are some uh, types of flame sensors. Uh, then we have some dif different PLC devices which monitor the flame sensors. And then there are some management system which basically manage all the process, uh, like a burner management process. So burner management systems uh, uh, designed to protect uh, heaters from explosion. Uh, and if there is a system which is designed to protect from explosion, if we ha can get access to the system, we uh, can do something bad. And yeah, so let's see. Uh, this is an example of a uh, uh, very simple uh, burner management system. Uh, it consists of the you know, things like uh, uh, gas supply, oil supply, uh, air, air supply. Uh, there are some valves, like um, uh, safety valves. So two, two safety valves. We have a, a flame sensor uh, and the other things. It's an example from the um, uh, simple uh, Siemens burner management system. Okay, if, for example, if we have access to burner management system, the question is what we can do. Uh, because, you know, many um, presentations like, okay, we have access to PLC device and uh, we can do something bad with critical process, but what, what exactly? And you can uh, read the presentation from Jason Larson. It's very good uh, research about, really about this topic, like what we can do with the access to critical system. But what about uh, the um, burner management system? So there are three components uh, in a, um, a, a fire triangle. We have uh, oxygen, fuel, and heat. And if something will happen with the, um, with the air fuel ration, uh, it's, not, it's not okay. Uh, but if fuel is missing, uh, everything is fine. But if um, air is missing, uh, it's, uh, it's potentially dangerous because if air is missing, we, uh, there's some fuel uh, which can be uh, left in, um, uh, in the combustion uh, chamber, and uh, then the next time uh, the, some some fuel is left, the next time we will you will start the burning process, uh, there will be an explosion. So uh, the the idea is if attacker uh, wants to uh, uh, make some bad things to the burner management critical process, he needs to control uh, the sources of flammable mixtures. Uh, 
Uh, and there are, there are the, uh, four um, things what can happen. So for example, uh, oil or gas leaking to combustion chamber because the valves uh, were not uh, properly closed. So some gas can uh, leak to the uh, combustion chamber. Uh, or for example, some oil next, ta next time when you uh, burn the system uh, will be uh, when you start the system will be a potential explosion. Um, and uh, the other thing is like, if you don't do the purge uh, after every uh, system reboot, because when you uh, shut down the system, some parts of oil can, uh, or gas can left in the combustion chamber. And you need to uh, do some purge to clean uh, uh, to clean all the things. And if you don't do that, so the next time you have some, uh, some small amount of oil uh, in, the, um, in the chamber, then a little bit more and more and more, and then when you have a fire, uh, oil, uh, all oil uh, will explode. And this is how it's possible to uh, conduct some kind of attack. There are other things like, uh, for example, if you... Uh, if the heat is not enough, uh, there will be no fire, but the oil um, valve is open, so oil will be still uh, stored in, in the tank. Uh, so, so many you know, uh, different um, uh, physical types of attacks. So an uh, burner management system, they basically control all those, um, all those, all those risks. So, the question is what you can do with uh, burn and management system if you have access to burn and management system. The easier thing is to turn off the purge uh, because if you, you know, turn off the, uh, open some valves or turn off the ignition, there are some other parts or, or other sensors we can, which can uh, alert. Uh, but if you turn off the purge, so one time you do reboot the system, everything is okay. Next time everything is okay. But after the five or 10 um, re system reboots, there will be an explosion. So it's like a, like a very steel uh, physical backdoor uh, uh, attack. So it was a, uh, you know, one uh, deep uh, dive uh, into one of the uh, processes in oil and gas. Uh, the other uh, critical part is uh, metering, uh, and one of the most critical parts of, uh, of metering is uh, fiscal metering or uh, custody transfer. Uh, because uh, when, uh, for example, upstream company sells oil to the midstream company, they need to uh, measure this oil, the, the quantity of oil. It's not like setting the uh, New Balance boots. You know how much boots you have, and you know how to. You know, uh, it's it's easy to sell. You have thousand boots. You sell thousand boots. But in oil and gas, you need to have um, meters uh, very uh, with very good quality to um, to do that. Uh, and um, Yeah, and uh, those, those things are called uh, f fiscal metering. Because if you have a um, you know, small error in a, in a measurement like less than uh, uh, 1% and uh, uh, 0.1%, uh, the company, the typical company can uh, you know, waste like millions of dollars. Uh, and that's why there are uh, specific systems to uh, control uh, fiscal metering. So basically, there are uh, very uh, expensive and um, uh, flow meters from those vendors, and then there are flow computers. Uh, the flow computers, uh, for example, the Daniel uh, Denpack, uh, now it's called uh, Emerson Flow Boss, it's one of the most popular uh, computers for uh, fiscal metering. So it's a, it's a, it's a big computer, and the idea of this computer is just to calculate the uh, quali uh, quantity of oil based on different parameters like um, uh, 
pressure, temperature, and stuff like that. Uh, those computers, uh, I think that security of those computers is mostly uh, through obscurity because nobody have real access to those uh, devices. But uh, if 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 we have, if somebody can have access to this device, I'm pretty sure that it's it's vulnerable. But uh, the idea is not here. The idea is like, okay, we have this flow computer, but the data from this flow computer is sent it to some accounting system, which is controlled by SAP and Oracle, stuff like that. So uh, we can change this data somewhere in a, uh, in a data aggregation system and so on. And um, there are some, some of the systems uh, which mentioned here uh, have uh, internet accesses. Some of them have uh, access to, for example, business applications like SAP systems. So, uh, they are not, they're not just inside some uh, operation technology network. They have real connections to the uh, to outside world. And the last um, uh, critical process is oil storage. Uh, it also consists of the, uh, different parts like meters, then we have tank gouging systems, and then we have tank inventory system. We, we have different tanks. We have uh, we need to collect this information from from tanks, and then we have terminal management systems who contr which control tank inventory systems, and those systems are connected with uh, uh, business applications like ICP. Uh, so this is briefly how it looks like. We have different tanks and how uh, the things are going. So for example, uh, here we can see that the the tank master server, and this server is sending information to some client engineering, and this, uh, and then this information by uh, Ethernet using OPC client uh, going to some somewhere else. And some of the uh, tank inventory systems uh, not only allows you to view information, but uh, they allow you to control, uh, like change the alarm uh, levels and so on. Uh, and to finalize the part of uh, the physical part is uh, the question of how attackers can get access to, uh, to uh, can understand what are uh, the systems implemented in the particular company. That's, that's very easy. You can just open the uh, website of any uh, company like Honeywell and look at the press releases like, we implemented this XX system to ZZZ company. And there's so many information on the LinkedIn and success stories and stuff like that. Uh, so now let's talk about the uh, enterprise applications uh, because the idea of this talk is to show how the uh, operation technology, critical operation technology processes are connected with uh, enterprise business applications. And we have um, mostly it's SAP and Oracle and SAP is I installed in uh, 86% of oil and gas, uh, with Fortune to sell oil and gas companies. But this is a more important thing. You know, uh, 70 million uh, barrels of oil per day is controlled by SAP systems. And do you know how much oil uh, produced per day totally is? 94 million. So it's 75% of all oil production controlled by SAP systems. I think it's kind of a critical part. Um, and SAP systems, they, um, uh, they have many uh, business applications uh, to manage uh, oil and gas. They have a uh, great presentation that what kind of areas they control. And uh, I need to do presentation more quickly uh, or quicker, but uh, there are so many slides and you can find the white paper and the presentation. So I'll just stop on there most critical things. Uh, so four parts uh, which are managed by SAP, basically uh, the capital spend and effectiveness is not very interesting. This part that's interesting is hydrocarbon supply chain. So there are some SAP systems like SAP ECC uh, for oil and SAP XMII, uh, which designed to uh, manage uh, production and uh, revenue and so on. Uh, and there's a digital SAP digital oil field operations and consists of the different systems uh, listed here. Uh, 
they're also involved in um, like uh, metering, uh, storage, and so on. And operational integrity, uh, is, uh, it, as asset management systems, uh, they collect information about the um, uh, different assets. So, so they need to have some connections to uh, operation technology network. And Oracle also have many uh, things in operation uh, technology. So uh, this is the, the, one of the main slides, is like how um, business applications are connected with um, operation technology um, areas. So we have uh, project management systems which are connected to exploration systems. We have asset lifecycle management uh, which is connected to refinery and separation uh, because you need to control the data. Uh, we have limb systems and uh, different tank master systems uh, like SAP for oil and gas and SAP XMI. And this, the, the part for the tank management, it will be the, uh, our demonstration basically. So how, uh, S, how we can uh, manage the oil storage uh, based on the SAP systems. So very, um, in very simple system, uh, the company infrastructure look like that. So how uh, different SAP systems and connected with outside world and how they connected with uh, operation technology. Uh, and this is a very simple example. Uh, and you can imagine how, you know, how, how complex it can be. So there are at least you know, five different uh, ways how attackers can get access to operation technology network from, uh, from enterprise network. So if people think that there is an air gap uh, between operation technology and enterprise. No, it's not, and there are so many uh, ways. And our, the idea of this presentation is to show you what kind of, uh, uh, what kind of ways we have. Uh, so how we can uh, do something, but let's start. Uh, first of all, we need to get access from the internet to uh, enterprise network. Uh, this is the list of presentations, my old presentations about different vulnerabilities in uh, SAP internet resources like SAP portal, how to uh, hack SAP router, it's also internet facing applications, how to exploit the Trojan. So all the things, uh, how we can, there's so many things like how we can exploit SAP systems to get inside a company. Okay, when you're inside, you can uh, exploit uh, different ERP security issues like vulnerabilities, misconfigurations, and custom code issues. Uh, also, I don't want to waste many time on this area. I just will tell you that SAP applications have uh, 3,500 uh, vulnerabilities uh, totally. And every month, SAP uh, release patches for 20 to 30 new vulnerabilities. Uh, it's, it's pretty much. So it's not a, a problem to understand how we get access to SAP system. For Oracle, it's more or less the same. Uh, Misconfigurations, so SAP systems are so complex, uh, there are hundreds of different um, web services, web applications, and so on that can be used to exploit the system and custom code issues. Uh, again, um, the systems, the business applications are uh, customizable and um, every company can develop their own uh, transactions and especially in the specific industries they can develop their own transactions and programs to manage uh, production and storage and metering and so on and those programs uh, can have a vulnerabilities uh, so if you're interested in the SAP security you can just open erpscan.com and there's a, uh, 50 presentations on this area but uh, and yeah I think that now it's uh, now it's start with the technical part. So how we can get access to uh, this application like ERP system to uh, operation technology network? I think you will start here. Okay. 
Thanks, Alex. Um, so Alex talked us about um, uh, different problem uh, risk uh, in the industrial process in the um, for oil uh, oil and gas extraction. Uh, and uh, he explained us that uh, um, SAP ARP system are connected to those systems. So now we'll see, um, we have a, a focus on some concrete examples and vulnerabilities we found and how we can get down from the high level uh, SAP business suit to uh, the plant, the, the industrial process, also known as uh, OT. Uh, operational technology. So the main the main picture is like this. So we have a lot of uh, vulnerabilities for the sub business suites. It's like hypothesis. We already own some uh, ERP system at this level, um, and we see that there is a connection with um, uh, sub MII. So um, it's like uh, I, I will talk uh, a little bit about that later. But it's a component of sub that is bridging the, the plant and the business uh, world. And uh, after SAP MII, you have uh, uh, SAP plant connectivity and, uh, uh, and HANA, and that we will, uh, in, we will focus on those kind of, uh, on those systems and the problem inherent that we found. So um, you can see that there are several uh, vectors, attack vectors uh, to get from the top to the bottom. Uh, so we identify uh, one uh, interesting vector is from uh, MRI, PCO, and we get down to the um, SCADA world. Uh, and another vector will be from HANA to, um, to, to, to get to the PCO and then uh, SCADA. So what we need to uh, hack, it's now, uh, oh yeah, I, I miss uh, as well Oracle. It's a big player, in, but anyway, uh, we, we need to have to hack uh, Oracle, AAM, uh, SAP HANA, SAP MII, SAP PCO, and then we, get, we will get to the plants. So, um, okay. Um, <clears throat> so with uh, Oracle Enterprise Asset Management, uh, now you have a kind of uh, e-business suit platform that has already uh, uh, a bunch of known vulnerabilities. So um, uh, we, in the company, we disclosed uh, several uh, big vulnerabilities like uh, XSS, SQLI, XXE, uh, and um, user in, in enumeration vulnerabilities. So you have the, the link for that. Um, so uh, now we will focus on uh, quickly on HANA, uh, not far, so HANA is what uh, a database in memory. It's, um, um, it's the, the connection in the product or uh, Rolta on view, uh, there is a connection between HANA and uh, SAP PCO. They implemented uh, something like that. So uh, it's a configuration where we can get access if we own HANA to uh, SAP PCO and then the plant. Uh, the attack surface of HANA is um, like you, um, we have a several connection be, uh, between uh, different systems. There is a SAP RFC connections, uh, and of course, inherent uh, HANA vulnerabilities. Uh, the thing is, uh, we just uh, uh, two months ago uh, in September released. Uh, uh, um, we we found a memory corruption that gets to a remote code execution in the AGB index server of HANA. It's the core component of the database. So it's very, that kind of vulnerability gets a very high uh, CVSS score and it's quite bad. And that gets us to, uh, to the full control of uh, this kind of server. So yeah, of course, uh, SAP has patched the vulnerabilities uh, and it, you can uh, apply uh, this SAP node and you will find all, everything to get uh, things uh, fixed. So that's good. Um, no, another vector uh, was uh, to get to uh, SAP MII and then PCO and then the plant. So the focus on SAP MII, uh, it's, uh, so what is MII? Because there, there's a lot of acronyms if you're not very, uh, uh, in this uh, in ERP world, uh, it's, it could be a nightmare to understand all. So MII, it's Manufacturing Integration and Intelligence. So um, it's uh, the bridge between uh, manufacturing and enterprise business. Uh, 
uh, to get uh, a view of, uh, no, for instance, uh, production performance to uh, people that are less technical. So uh, it sits on SAP NetViewer G2, G2 EE uh, platform uh, with, uh, with its uh, vulnerabilities. It's a big, big platform uh, with a lot of stuff. Uh, MII will, um, you will uh, have, uh, for instance, no, it's uh, XIPPS technology. So um, uh, it's a SAP technology to, uh, that's uh, expose web services uh, and um, can use uh, and data from multiple systems. Uh, there is a quite big uh, um, exposure surface with uh, with MII. Uh, this thing, this uh, this component is uh, on the corporate network. It's not on the other side. Uh, it's still not on the OT. Um, and uh, the main application uh, is named uh, XAPBS MII ears. It's where a bunch of code, interested code, is. Uh, and uh, the kind of uh, if you if you want to get access uh, to uh, uh, the MII stuff in the server, you will point your browser to this URL. It's the beginning of uh, a pen test, for instance. Uh, so <clears throat> MII uh, has uh, some vulnerabilities. Uh, actually, you know, there is a blind SQL I that gets us to the admin password uh, of the of the instance, uh, but uh, we we can't disclose uh, now the the details. It has not been fixed yet, and uh, XXA uh, vulnerabilities as well. So we can suppose now that on MII with this uh, vulnerability, we have admin access on the NetViewer platform. Um, What's uh, okay? So that's the okay. The slide with the um, attack surface. Uh, we focus on the um, on the vulnerabilities that are uh, inherent to the NetViewer platform. So <clears throat> what uh, what can we do? We have admin access. Uh, we would like it would be um, uh, very uh, useful if we could get uh, OS execution access. So we. We find something very interesting uh, with the admin access of the uh, of the NetViewer platform. There is a feature that is uh, in the log viewer uh, of the platform that enables you to um, connect to uh, um, a remote system. So I was interested in you know, what's what's this feature. So um, we can set an IP, a port, and uh, apparently there is a hard coded protocol sub uh, sub. Sub instance agents, yeah. So I put my uh, uh, an IP uh, under my control. I I open a, a socket on my uh, on my laptop, and I see what uh, what I get. So <clears throat> the thing is, uh, the 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 MEE will send a SOAP request to my uh, my laptop. He will send me nicely uh, authorization basic uh, header, and uh, if I decode this header, I see a very strange username, quite long, uh, looking like a UUID and uh, a password that's quite, or not quite random, but anyway. Um, so what can I do with this information? It looks very interesting, but I don't really know yet. So. Um, with some research, you understand that uh, the, the port it was connected, uh, the default port he is tried to connect to, uh, 513. It's um, a common port in SAP server uh, to get control. Uh, it's, uh, it exposes a SOAP inter interface on all the servers, and uh, it gets you control like a process list instance, uh, start, stop, that kind of uh, control overall control about the, the instances. So it's like um, this kind of connection should be used uh, within trusted sub server inside the cluster. We can have a sub cluster. Um, and um, this, uh, this SOAP uh, interface exposes uh, you know, several methods. And one method that really was very interesting was the OS execute method, of course. It gets, uh, it gets my interest. In, um, so the thing is, uh, OS executes need to be authenticated. Uh, usually, uh, this SOAP inter sub server, you need to have uh, the OS username and password to get uh, through the authentication. 
uh, to the sub subservice. Uh, in this case, this strange uh, username and password uh, gets you uh, as well. You don't need to know the OS uh, username and password that runs the top server. So you can uh, you can get execution uh, with uh, this strange username, and in on the server it will be executed by the user OS user that's running the SOAP server. It's uh, it's not root of course, but it's uh, it's mm, uh, the SAP user that is running uh, the everything. MEE ADM in the case of uh, MEE server. So with that kind of stuff, we can quickly uh, upload a backdoor because I can run the shell uh, shell command. So I will upload my backdoor, run it, get a remote shell, uh, and uh, and that's the beginning for uh, the um, another step to uh, to hack a PCO. So. Uh, just a, a little comment about uh, when I have a, a shell access on the MEE server, I can get some information like, uh, okay, the database uh, password, they are encrypted with uh, some file in, inside the file, but in another file in the same uh, directory, you will find the key to the encrypted uh, file. So with that, we ca you can de decrypt the, um, the Sybase, the database uh, super administrator and several uh, SAP specific accounts. So it's always good, but our interest is to get down to the plant. So we want, uh, uh, we will uh, interest now to the PCO application. So um, it's, uh, the PCO is uh, hosted on uh, the OT network, and um, what it is. Uh, so it's a uh, sub plan connectivity PCO. Uh, it's the bridge between a uh, manufacturing module of SAP. So it's not only MII, but uh, uh, we we are interesting with MII. Um, it's a Windows box. Uh, PCO is coded uh, in .NET. It's a .NET application. Uh, okay, so, and it's used uh, the logic of a uh, usual pipeline. You have sources, you define sources, destination, and you will have some filtering, some analyzing, and uh, you get, you will get information from the sources to the destination. So it's kind of a uh, proxy for MII from the information from the OPC server in the plant PLC and MII. Uh, the, the sources are OPC server, uh, basically like Matricon, who I, I quote the, the most uh, used, so Siemens Simatic and Keep Server X, uh, or you can have directly DCS system uh, as well, defined as sources. Um, but we will uh, look at uh, sources like OPC servers. And the de destination could be uh, no HANA, like we said, or uh, uh, XI, uh, SAP MEE, and another system, other systems. Uh, each, um, when you have a, the, a source which is connected to a destination, well, you, you could have several instances that are named agents. They are technically Windows services. So a process uh, running uh, the service. And they do the, the polling and uh, the routing of the information between uh, source and destination. Um, okay, so PCO, the attack surface now of PCO is like, uh, of course, like usual uh, inner vulnerabilities of PCOs. Uh, but uh, you have, um, uh, actually you have a, a connection between MEE and PCO. Uh, and in uh, some configuration, when you are setting your uh, PCO uh, server as a query mode, you will have a, um, a server listening on PCO and MEE sending requests. Uh, on the other side, you could have a um, uh, notification mode, and in this case, that will be PCO that will send to a server listening on MII uh, information about the plant's processes. So we, we were interested by the query mode of, uh, of PCO because then uh, there is a, a socket, a server listening on PCO and we have full control on MI, so it's like a good use case. Um, so, okay. So the thing is, uh, we are in this configuration on the query process where MI uh, sends a inform send query to a PCO to get information about the plant process. Uh, and the thing is, uh, they when you configure, uh, when you add a new data server PCO uh, inside MI, they ask you to enter a username and password. You don't have the choice. 
Well, uh, this username and password is required to get uh, access to the SOAP interface of PCO uh, to get uh, control over the agents, start, stop, dump configuration. Uh, the thing is, uh, well, this, uh, this authentication requires um, uh, it's the Windows users and Windows password on uh, PCO. So it's stored, with, we found that it's stored inside the MEE uh, database uh, in some uh, table. And, but the thing is, it's uh, three days encrypted. And what is the key? So uh, having a look at, the, at what's going on, it's uh, stored inside a service that's called uh, secure storage inside MI. And this uh, thing is quite uh, well designed and uh, you cannot uh, so easily uh, get to the tri triple desk key if you're not the ME application. Uh, but the thing is, we noticed that uh, inside ME, you can uh, have a control uh, over the encryption used uh, inside the database for the PCO credentials. And we saw that, okay, uh, apparently base64 uh, is authorized like an encryption uh, method. So it's cool. Uh, and then we get, uh, we have access to the database of MAE. We can get the base64 uh, 64 password and decode it and uh, get the Windows users of, uh, of PCO. Uh, this thing has been uh, fixed uh, recently very quickly by uh, SAP uh, this month actually uh, with this SAP node. So the base uh, uh, 64 is not anymore uh, allowed as an encryption uh, method. And um, okay, so uh, another uh, the kind of service that are interesting to look at uh, that are running in PCO are the, the SOAP Remote Administration Interface uh, that I, I briefly talked about uh, that's running on the port uh, 550 uh, and which gets you access to the configuration of the PCO and it's very good because uh, inside you can have, uh, depending of your configuration of the PCO, you can find another uh, uh, type, uh, other passwords and uh, RFC links. So it's very, uh, very interesting. Uh, and there is a interesting point, the, the 9000s, that's the port listening to get requests uh, from the me uh, server. So um, using uh, XML protocol uh, over XML, uh, it, uh, they call it XMI protocol. And of course, the, if the box is not uh, properly firewalled, you will uh, you will have uh, access to the 445 and with uh, our uh, credentials it will be a, a piece of cake to own a pco um okay so the kind of uh, attacks that are interesting now it's like uh we can build a, a fake pco and um uh, kill the actual uh, pco and shows in mii that everything is uh, going okay or oh, so it's like a, a, a DOS. Um, or something else, it's like doing a man in the middle uh, with our fake server that will transmit uh, the data to the real PCO server and just do some slight modification uh, on, the, on the request and answer. So concretely, it means like uh, if you have a um, monitoring interface on the MII, I will show it later, but because maybe without a picture, it's difficult to uh, to get it. But um, you can build some uh, in monitoring interface on the MII that will uh, show you uh, your, the level of your tank uh, and that kind of uh, production information. So we can uh, manipulate that information and uh, to show uh, on the operator that's looking at MII that everything is going good while the tank is uh, is uh, is going tank level uh, is going down. Um, okay, uh, on on the nine thousand port, uh, there are several protocol attack. We did some fuzzing, found some DOS memory uh, exhaustion. Uh, this those problems uh, are. Um, they have been fixed just uh, a week ago by uh, by SAP, uh, so it's in this note. Um, and so it means that uh, now we have some control about uh, what's going on on the OT network, and uh, and and that's uh, that's really a, a good point. We 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 get down like we wanted, so. Um, uh, PCO is in interacting with uh, OPC servers, 
uh, we, we, we found in the internet that uh, often people ask, okay, I have problem with my configuration with uh, OPC that use DECOM uh, and uh, it's getting uh, complicated and uh, on the SAP uh, help forum, uh, no, someone answered that, uh, you know that if you install all on the same box, uh, it will be uh, much easier and you won't have any uh, DECOM problems. So that kind of stuff is like, uh, okay, for us it's quite good. Uh, in uh, in the term of an uh, attacker point of view, um, <clears throat> okay. And now I can uh, show you a little demo. It's like um, uh, um, how to say that. Um, basically, uh, we uh, so what was here is just um, um, we have access to PCO uh, during using some kind of vulnerabilities uh, in MI and so on. And as you saw on the internet, there are uh, people really implement the OPC servers uh, on the same uh, uh, Windows box as a uh, as a PCO. And OPC servers will basically uh, collect data from the PLC devices. So if you have PCO, you're inside the OT network. You have direct access to uh, OPC devices and. Uh, to PLC devices, sorry. Yeah. And um, so the PLC devices, they control um, uh, most of the production and they use, you know, like Modbus protocol. So it's like uh, just sending uh, simple packets without any authentication to control them. So it basically, if you hack PCO, you're, you're like inside the OT network mm -hmm. and the, the only thing you need to know, it's like, a, uh, the details of the the existing of some existing process, and uh, yeah, and our example is to so we have a configuration. You you will continue. Or? Yeah, just show the demo and, uh, and yeah. yeah. So our demonstration is the full process of uh, you know we have like a ten tank. Uh, yeah, okay. you can yeah, you continue. Yeah, it's, it's, that's it's okay. So um, <laughs> uh, as a proof of concept, uh, we connected the SAP MII to SAP OPC. And then uh, we um, we have a um, is, uh, SAP MI is connected to SAP PCO, which is connected to a OPC server, and uh, this OPC server uh, is getting information is uh, speaking to S seven Siemens uh, PLC, and uh, and is uh, speaking uh, with uh, Siemens protocol ISO protocol. So. Um, what we show is that uh, we can learn uh, what the ME operator is viewing uh, by um, uh, uh, spoofing and sending uh, OPC um, fake data. So we have a, a first phase where we learn uh, the information about the level of the of the water jauge. In our case, it's water. <laughs> in the office, but we can uh, imagine that it's oil. Um, and uh, uh, first we learn uh, how, how the level is, and uh, then we will fake, we'll get uh, control about the valve, which is opening the, the water tank, and we will fake the information that the level is still uh, steady like it was a minute before. So if you, okay, ah, okay good, and uh, play pause this. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So on the oh, uh -huh. wait, we don't see all the. Um, can can you manage? It? No. It's not a full screen. Full screen. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, like, like this would good. It's not really important that we sh we saw all this time. Uh, so on the left we have um, uh, our MEE supervision uh, dashboard cockpit that shows us uh, the level of the tank that you see on the right side. Uh, and the level now is uh, now, uh, quite full, uh, 24,000 uh, gallons. <laughs> and uh, uh, I will then, we will uh, on the normal operation mode, we open the, maybe you don't see it, but the, f the water is flowing and uh, you see that the cockpit on the MI shows that the level is uh, going down, so everything normal. Uh, and the status valve is the this red square. Okay, that's 
hidden by the okay. Uh, so the valve is opened up. I close the valve, um, and now, okay, now I have a clients, uh, my own PCO clients on the MEE server. Though it's like it's quite raw and. Uh, uh, but it's for the just demonstration for the proof concepts. So my client is sending a request to get the oil level, and uh, I uh, I will start a server, a fake PCO server that will uh, spoof uh, queries answer to MEE uh, and will give him this oil level. Uh, I have admin access to the MEE, so I change uh, the um, the PCO. In the configuration, the PCO server, and uh, it should be pointed to a local host because I'm on the MEE server, and I will begin to receive frames from the ME uh, query process. And um, so we we see now that it's our fake uh, message that are displayed on the interface. I will open with my simple client. I'll open the valve. The water with, will flow down. Uh, now the the water is um, flowing down. And uh, the level is still still, doesn't move. Uh, okay, water flowing, cool. Um, and then, okay, I close the the valve. I replace the real server just to see that uh, okay, it's uh, uh, what is the real level now. Uh, and you see that okay, we just uh, emptied the the tank, and uh, it shouldn't. We shouldn't change that and. Uh, and get far, <laughs> but yeah, well, that's that's the demonstration of this kind of attack. So, Alex, you maybe want to yeah, yeah there's some, some, there's some oh, yes. yeah, that was a, just an example how we can you know. Um, Manipulate the uh, the quantity of uh, oil in the, in the tank. Uh, so the idea is to show the basically the idea of all presentation is to show that there are some connections, many different connections from enterprise network into operational technology network. And in oil and gas, there are so many uh, processes that uh, you can you know control uh, by those things. So. And just to name a few um, uh, things, what can happen because the 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 name of the talk was how hackers can control uh, the oil, oil stocks, and you saw this uh, kind of a backdoor how we can tell the uh, decision makers how much oil we have, but in reality we will have uh, much less. And if uh, you know that SCP control the 75% 70, uh, of oil production, so if you manage to upload this malware to every uh, company and just a little bit change the, uh, the, um, the, qu uh, the quantity of oil in stocks for every company just a little bit, so that's how we can uh, really manipulate um, oil stocks because if companies think that there's less oil that uh, they have, the price for oil will be higher and vice versa. Uh, and another, another attack vector which is possible, uh, it's apply plant equipment sabotage. Uh, and even without uh, having uh, vulnerability in equipment, uh, you have uh, asset management systems which uh, designed to control, to tell you how many uh, uh, how many uh, problems in specific equipment. So you can uh, send a report that there is a problem in equipment in some very remote facility in oil and gas. It will be some offshore uh, uh, platform is in the middle of nowhere. So that's how you can, um, and you can say in the system that there is a problem here. So the company will send people to this offshore facility to uh, do something, but there is no problem, so they will spend money and time and so on. And the plant destruction uh, basically can happen, for example, with the burden management system. Uh, how to secure that? Uh, protect business applications and review all connections and, of course, secure connections and, uh, and don't include the critical infrastructure or PCO systems to, uh, into domain because sometimes it's 
uh, we saw that it's they're included into domain because there's specific configuration uh, configuration need for for that, and they're included in domain, but it's not uh, really required. And so, final thing, what 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 the hell it was uh, for researchers? Now you guys know how. Uh, what are the different business processes and what are different systems in oil and gas? It's a big landscape for a new research and to, it's a, a whole new universe. Uh, for pen testers, now you know uh, when you have pen test for oil and gas company, you can try to get access to OT network or you can at least tell uh, your companies, uh, not, it's not just like, I have access to your operation system, I have a shell access. No, you can say, we have access to this technology and we can do this, this, and that. And for chief security officers, guys, now you know that there are connections between business critical applications and OT, and we list some of them, and you can, uh, now you know at least how to you know, secure those systems. So uh, thanks uh, for listening to this presentation. Hope you enjoy it. And Okay. Thank you.